The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. I'm here with Amelia Quinn. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I know that you um, spoke to Ron last time. I did. I did. Yeah. I feel like I'm going around the team now. <laughs> well, there's two more after me then, if you are doing that. Oh, well, like, I'll have to have two more releases then and just get around all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so can we start with the amazing background that you've got going on? Because you've got the most incredible guitars on the left, well, my left, yeah. so you're no. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, can you like talk us through what's going on? Because it looks epic. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It's... um. Yeah, it's 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 continuously changing and there's more to add to it. But I've got my guitars on the wall because this room isn't hugely wide. Um, so I need the floor space. I'm really sorry if you hear my dog barking in the background. She's just very protective of the house. So no, it's cool. it's it <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real life. It yeah. gives us like um, a good idea of where you're at. So it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Like she, we live right on a street. <laughs> Also, everything that goes past, she's like, get away from my house. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, she's grumpy and old. It's fine. I can relate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That's um, so I've got like a Gretsch over there, electric Gretsch over here. This is my acoustic Epiphone that I take out with me. I've got a mandolin up there that you can't see because it's just out of frame. And then my acoustic Gretsch just in front of me. And then, yeah, just kind of a collection of, of signs and stuff. Obviously, I am a big fan of... Um, rustic american stuff so we've got like pepsi and budweiser route 66 uh, and a number plate up there which is um me and my partner's name she got me that for valentine's Aww. and yeah just a very um oh yeah and a lovely uh magazine cover um from my fir very first band when i was 15 and we were on the cover of a local magazine and so that's then you can't see it too much we're just going to ignore it <laughs> no I can't see it it just says Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so random question what did you want to be when you grew up many many things one one main one uh, that very nearly stuck was a marine biologist really yeah wow yeah um, so really, where did really, that come from um I mean my, one of my favorite animals one of the animals I'm most fascinated by is the yeah. giant squid that's super cool. random, I know. But um, if you've ever been to the Natural History Museum in London, if you haven't been, go. But you can see if you do behind the scenes tour, you can see the actual the one that they've got preserved, and it's massive because it's a giant squid. Yeah. Um, and just the just the fact that the bottom of the ocean is less explored than the moon That's is mind blowing. Yeah. It's mental, isn't it? And I just think that like, it's really interesting. All this stuff to be discovered. Um, all this, you know, these really weird looking animals that are down there, how they all live in no light. I mean, I, you know, teenage me knows exactly how they did it, but you know. Um, and uh, yeah, just just kind of a love for, for the ocean and, and stuff. And I got my diver's license and that when I was a teenager as well, sort of when I shadowed a marine biologist as well at one point, sort of go study coral reefs and stuff. So it very nearly happened, very nearly oh. didn't. So when did the music diversion come into play? Um, sixth form in A levels, and I just sort of, I thought, Do you know what, I actually have a passion for this, and something just steered me to that. Something you know, sort of made me think, yeah, I should, I should make a go of this. I should try. I should at least try it. If it doesn't work yeah. out, I'll go be a marine biologist. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I thought, I thought I'll give it a go and uh, and just kind of fell down that rabbit hole and, and here I am still still giving it a go. <laughs> still doing amazing stuff. Um, another random question before we get on to music stuff. I if think. you were in a karaoke bar, one, Oof. would you do karaoke? And two, what would your song be? I would do karaoke, obviously. You know, got to <laughs> get out there. Nice. Oh, I feel like the song that I would do would vary so much because, like, today I've been humming to myself. I've been, um, the song that's been stuck in my head is uh, These Boots Made for Walking. Amazing. So I might, might give that a bash. Okay. Might do Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. Might not even do something country. Might might do something pop that I can't name off the top of my head now. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Has it always been country for you? Um, It's been something I've circled back to a lot. Okay. and my very first song ever that I ever wrote when I was 11 uh, was a country song as it happened it wasn't a conscious effort to say hey I'm gonna write a country song because I'm gonna be a country artist yeah. it was just more that's that's what the preset was on the keyboard and that's what I went with um 
and it kind of I don't know since since then everything else I've tried has led back to it has gotten heavier okay. <laughs> over the years and was sort of more into rock like that that band there was sort of a bit of a pop punk kind of band um angsty teen and all that stuff a bit grungy um but after that I circled back again to sort of singer songwriter folky kind of stuff mm. then I formed a blues rock band when I was in uni um and that was you know again it's that sort of rootsy feel it was the blues in there very heavily blues influenced and uh, when I left that I went back into more singer songwriter more sort of folky kind of stuff which then morphed into sort of well actually no I can do the rockier heavier stuff myself I don't have to have a band to do that and I think um I went through some I went through some things <laughs> found my fire and uh, yeah kind of came back into what what I brand as um roots music or sort of southern rock kind of sound alt country whatever you want to call it it's you know if you like it listen to it <laughs> so what's in your current playlist on my current playlist yeah Jeez, um always the Cadillac three always the brothers Osborne like dead excited to see them um we've got Larkin Poe on there bit, bit of the bluesy vibe there nice. um we've got Beth Hart again with the sort of blues although she does she can do all sorts of genres and sound amazing um trying to think like off the top of my head bit of Eric Church bit bit more sort of pop country getting in there a bit Miranda Lambert um yeah I think off the top of my head that's that's sort of what I've been name so if you are looking for inspiration to write a song um like what do you do, do you, is there a process I wish there was <laughs> <laughs> make it a lot more predictable um it kind of just happens I know that's the most cop-out answer you could give no not it, at all it just comes to me in a train um <laughs> I wish. I see it a lot of the time when I'm trying to sleep that happens a lot. I don't get very really inconvenient. Sleep. I know, right? I just you just <laughs> your mind just relaxes yeah. and you're not thinking, okay, well, I've got all of this on my to-do list, I've got my work, I've got to do this, you know, I've got to remember, you know, to put groceries in the fit, you know, fridge, feed the dog, feed the rabbit, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um and you just I think in that sort of relaxed state, as you're drifting away, that's when your brain really starts to process. And my inspiration really comes from the things around me, from things you know that I've lived through my experiences experiences of the people around me and um and I think when that's all sort of mulling over in my mind and I'm processing it that's when my creativity comes out and that's when I get an inspiration so I usually start with a bit of a line a bit of a melody of something and I'm like mm. and I'm like mm. do I like it enough to go and, and get up out of bed and go and do something with that and then it'll, it'll go on a bit and I'll get a bit more of it. I'm like, right, I need to get up. Sorry, babe. I'm just going to go write a song. I know it's 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure your partner loves you for that as well. Oh, she does. She comes, she comes and sits on the floor and listens. It's actually really Aww. cute. That's just how my mama raised me to be. 
it now. The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. Um, talk to us about Amelia's bitches. Yes, my, my bitches. They name themselves. I will not take credit for that name. Um, <laughs> it's way yeah, better they... than like One Direction is or whatever else there are. I know, it's like, yeah, like Direction or whatever they're called. Yeah, I've got, yeah. got my bitches. It's fun. <laughs> Where did um, that come from? I think, I'm pretty sure it came from the song Outlaw. Um, yeah. It was Chorus goes, the bad, who's the baddest bitch in the land. Um, so, you know, they're clearly the baddest bitches in the land, <laughs> as they say. So, um, but yeah, that's that's come from that. And I thought, why not? It's a bit of fun. Um, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's very, it's very um, me as well. So, yeah, that's kind of where that came from. <laughs> um, so you obviously have come to talk to us today uh, because you love chatting to us. But also because you've got an amazing brand new single coming out um, very soon. I do. I do. I have got um, Games coming out, which is, uh, it was a co-write with Finola, who's also the featured artist on this. So she's duetting with me on this song. Um, It's coming out in July, 23rd of July. It drops. I'm very excited for it. And she was your first ever co-write. Yes, she was. What was that like? Oh, it was... It was a little bit intimidating at first, um, but I'm very fortunate to have friends who have some co-writing experience and Finn um, has quite a bit of it. And she was really sweet, really guided me through the process and sort of gave me gave me ways of dealing with the anxiety because when you when you're writing with someone else, you know, it's all right when you're on your own and you and you come up with something really bad, but you don't want to throw that out into a room with other people and sort of, you know, almost out yourself like, I can't songwrite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awful um oh. but she was really lovely about it and uh and yeah she, she gave me the confidence to carry on and now I've done quite a few co-writes and that was very much uh, thanks to her had off. you met each other before was it like a first time meet and first time collab no we, we've been friends uh we met when she came and performed at a gig that I hosted through my gigs promotions company Whiskey nice. Kisses uh in Leeds in gosh 2019 okay so um, for a while um which which really helped obviously it wasn't a total strange yeah. <laughs> Just <being> like, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> was it kind of like a relief obviously like we're all living through hopefully the back end of a pandemic um and there's been quite a lot of alone time for everyone I think um so to do those co-writing collabs um was that seen as like almost like an icebreaker to kind of to give you an incentive sounds weird but to talk to someone again or to work with someone again yeah definitely I, I love collaboration and you know it's like people know if they've, if they've heard my music already for example mm. Girl Talk which has like 23 yeah. other women on it I do love collaboration and it's like it a nice... massive super grief it's great that's <laughs> yeah like a huge huge girl band in the country scene <laughs> yeah. um, and it's, it's really nice to work with other people and also and be able to sort of bounce ideas off other people, especially in writing, where it's so easy to get a block online and then that can screw up the whole song. And then you think, oh, I don't want to do it because I can't get over this line. Mm. And when you're working with someone else, they might come out with an idea that fits or they might even just say something that nudges that idea along. And you're like, oh, OK, I've got it now. Um, and like, it's, it's that two heads are better than one kind of thought. Like some some rights work better on your own. Some rights you just need someone there to to nudge along, or you nudge them along, and and you come out with something even better. But sometimes writing a song can be really personal, and like sharing yeah. those ideas can be completely daunting. Oh, it is, yeah, massively, yeah. massively. And I think I'm still getting used to the idea of being quite open. I'm not a very open person as much as I'm open about my processes and yeah. open to an extent. There are so you know there there are things that I struggle to talk about you struggle to talk about how I actually feel and taking it seriously <laughs> I'm, a, I'm one of those people I go, yeah, fine. Fine. <laughs> um, you know and I think having that you need to have that openness to write you need to delve down into those emotions and almost relive those moments that you're writing about and doing that in front of someone else is is really really daunting and some I'm still learning I'm still learning to do it <laughs> you said that that was your first of many collabs um did that sort of spiral into wanting to work with other people or yeah definitely I think that really opened the door for me for, for myself and say actually yeah, I can do that because I've always been of the mindset that I can't write on the spot I can't write on demand it just happens when it happens I can't control it 
and that showed me that actually yeah I could sit down on a scheduled time with someone and go into a writing session and come out with something you know something actually really good so that gave me a huge confidence base and made me want to do more of it which I have have now done (laughs) for someone that can't control when they write like you're constantly doing stuff and you're constantly releasing new material I just find that really hard to believe (laughs) I can't can't sit still I can't do it (laughs) Um, and I do I have a a big backlog of songs um yeah that's that's for sure so there are (laughs) plenty to get on with um and I think I write in clusters as well <laughs> yeah we're not trying up anytime soon um yeah I write I write in clusters so I will go long periods without writing anything and then it's always like it sounds really gross but it's almost like an itch <laughs> it's like, I, I itch and I'm like oh I need, I need to write a song I get really aggy and really annoyed and I'm like ooh. um and that's and that's generally when I'm building up to writing a song I've got something in there I've got this this itch to be creative again or I get annoyed at myself because I'm thinking oh god I haven't wrote written ages it's yes. dried up it's gone <laughs> um and yeah and then I'll write I'll write like five songs within the space of a couple of weeks and then that will be it for a little while or it'll be over a month and then that and then I'll spend two months just not really writing anything at all all life gets in the way as well yeah of course um do you think you've had more time to do more of that because of the pandemic yeah, massively, especially at the start um, of the first games was written at the very start of the first lockdown um, via Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was around then that I wrote quite a lot. And I think it really helped that I was in a creative sort of cluster, if you like, um, at that point as well to write games. But I wrote a lot of songs and I think I processed a lot as well because I was furloughed from my job. I didn't really, you know, music was all I had to do. We couldn't mm-hmm. go anywhere um and so I I ended up processing quite a bit that you know had happened to me over pretty much my whole life and I think that really helped get those emotions out get them onto paper and create something positive with that and create some art with it and I have kind of had a, a motto um for most of my adult life which is it was worth it if I come out with a song nice I like that a lot. <laughs> I don't think that would work on me though. That would be a fail. But I'm <laughs> <Sophie. laughs> um, What would you say was your biggest challenge over the last year as a musician? I think just being not being able to gig. I think that's a big one because that's a huge part of what we do. Yeah, we want to be out there. We want to be out there seeing people face to face. But having said that, live streams have been a really positive thing as well because I've been able to connect with fans that I never would have maybe even found before you know and they wouldn't have found me and and I've been able to connect with them in quite a personal way through comments and and through being able to speak directly to them on live streams so that's been a really amazing thing but I think gigging and and touring and having to rearrange all the tours and not knowing I think the biggest thing was not knowing when we were going to be able to do it again but thankfully I have my first gig back in nearly a year on Thursday. Ooh, you excited? I don't know what to take. I can't remember what uh... to do. <laughs> um, you recently celebrated the two year anniversary of your debut EP. Yeah. Um, what's it been like the last two years for you and the EP? Mad. It, it's been a total whirlwind. Um, do you think that launched everything else in yeah. terms of all the other stuff that's happened? Definitely. That was my that was my debut into sort of the UK country scene and and sort of the first thing I had to offer <laughs> in a recorded format and say, This is me, this is who I am. Um it's an amazing and it, first thing to offer. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um and it just yeah, it kind of went a bit mad. I got a few sort of festivals booked in, like Buck and Boots played that, and that was that was a huge deal. Um and I got some really great press for it. And I did some shows. Um, I did some tour, a bit of Katie Hurt's tour. Um, and that obviously gave me a massive boost because it put me in front of plenty of people who might not have heard of me yet. Um, and yeah, and, and it sort of really spurred me on to, to release then Mistakes um, as a single, which was my first full band thing, which was a little bit, a little bit scary because I thought, okay, well, they haven't heard this side of me yet, but we'll see. Hmm. Um, but it went down really, really, really well, um, which gave me the huge push to to get firecracker out which is the full band ep my second ep that i did um and that just that just went crazy i think it went to number three on the itunes country charts it's won an award as well it's my first ever award 
<laughs> so great. So yeah, it's yeah, it's it's been a, a crazy two years, but I'm very very grateful for it. So this is available on all streaming platforms. It was recorded with a virtually live audience, and I hope you love it as much as they did. Well, shit is Monday morning, and the bed sheets are a mess. I swear I am grateful, cause I ain't ready for kids yet. But damn it, where's my coffee and a hot water bottle too? And is it time to get back in bed? It's the day nearly through. I'm sorry if I have an attitude this morning going so great. Just leave me in the corner and throw some candy bars my way. Yeah. Being a woman, it's empowering and it's fun But this is one week, once a month that I really just don't want And all I'm seeing is red And the restroom is always engaged That just my bites and bodies head up And they're looking me all way And I'm sorry for complaining I think it's helping to ease the pain And if you don't have this problem Then you don't get a say hey. My life I could do without But I guess it's just nature's way of saying you go for another month And I know when it's over I probably want it back But it is surely the same worse than a hot plan Well I'll just crawl into bed with a wand and a box of tissues And I'm not usually crazy but right now I got some issues gonna cry it out and re-watch Friends episodes If you say the wrong thing to me you can help it if I explode I'm counting down the days till I can wear my white denim jeans But for now I'll stay in sweatpants I'm still a beauty queen Hey, hey Oh, and then this is a period of my life I could do without But I guess it's just nature's way of saying you could for another month and I know when it's over, I probably want it back. But it's surely the same worse than a hot flash. Hey, hey, yeah. Oh, oh, ow, ow, ow. Has anybody got a tampon? The Alpha Sessions. Um, I wanted to also ask you about Whiskey Kisses because um, yeah. it's a great project um, that you do and um, it's like an incredible initiative. Um, first of all, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Of course I can. So Whiskey Kisses, um, it started off as my gig promotions company because Leeds was being missed out a lot by the UK country scene. And so I thought, I'll bring them here. No one else is doing it. I'll do it. You know? Can't, can't not do things. Is it very um, London centric? It's very London, very Manchester as well. Liverpool quite a lot and sort of Leeds is, is obviously slightly smaller than Manchester so it gets missed out a little bit but there is a really vibrant music scene in Leeds which is why I wanted to sort of bring country music here a bit more. Um, and so that's how it started. We put on some monthly writers rounds and we got people in who'd, who'd never been to a writers round they didn't know what it was and they came out of it absolutely loving the format and just yeah. and just wanted to see more of it because it's so intimate and you get to know the stories and, and that's like the best bit um of being at those kind of gigs you get to know more about the actual song itself and it's so interesting to see where these come from um but obviously lockdown then happened so it mm. didn't <laughs> and that kind of got me thinking okay well what else can I do to benefit our scene you know it's not just about me I'm not you know I'm not the only person in the country scene I'm not an island you know I've, I like collaborating like I said um and I've built this knowledge you know over over many years <laughs> and um and I wanted to be able to share that somehow because I could see that some of my peers in certain areas they weren't sure and I had that knowledge but in other areas I wasn't sure and they had that knowledge and I wanted to build some sort of community so what I've now introduced are um, the new services that Whiskey Kisses offers. So we basically now offer one-to-one -one mentoring um, done by me, uh, Emma Moore, Rachel Selick and Eve Horn. And we've all got different areas of expertise. So it's, it's covering a, a wide range of, of topics to be able to help 
these other people and, and help new artists as well that are coming into the scene or coming into the industry because it's it's a little bit wild out there it's so daunting <laughs> for everyone I think that's involved particularly if you're new hugely so that's kind of the main feature of it as well as monthly masterclasses as well um aimed for people like the old version of you know younger me yeah. as an artist I, I would have wanted things that you know the younger artists need to know or even you know more established artists if they're struggling with certain areas that these are topics that they can dip in and out of and that's kind of the the main foundation of it there's lots more things to do with it and if anybody wants to check it out they just need to head to whiskeykissespromotions.com it's got all the information on there um but yeah the main base of it is knowledge is power and everybody deserves to be empowered definitely how do you have time for everything? <laughs> um, I don't sleep. <laughs> 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 At 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, do you ever have to um, prioritise to make sure that, I guess, the things that are important to you get sorted? Yes, definitely. It's, it's something that I'm only just learning. <laughs> Okay. And I'm still getting to grips with it, but I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, I do, I have a diary that I schedule everything in. I literally put my to-do lists every day. Love a good list. I um, love checking it off, especially when it's like, yeah, I did all of these things. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's prioritising things is hugely important. And also just taking a bit of a focus on, on me time as well, because like I said, life can get in the way when you're being creative and you know my my first and foremost for me in my you know being very selfish about it being in my life and what I want for me is to be this songwriter and to be an artist and be able to share my music and to do that I need to be able to write songs and be in the headspace to do that and sometimes life can get a little bit busy yeah she's waiting to watch the ball oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the time I've got it I just kind of have a cut off now as well on evenings say okay right now's family time yeah I've been with my family all day get things done have a cut off and spend the evening you know when I'm not gigging um with with my little family <laughs> and when you spoke to Ron last time you were just about to release Girl Talk yeah um which was a crazy busy day for you anyway how did that all go how did the launch of Girl Talk go um are you happy yeah. with how it all went yeah so happy and it's it's continuing so um for anyone that doesn't know girl talk is a single that i released on international women's day um of this year and it features 23 other um female performers so this is mad in band. itself the full band's female all the singers female <laughs> loads of singers <laughs> on there um, and I think we, we featured some more women of all different walks of life um, on the video as well, which was done via Zoom. Great. So that was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. And I think in total, there was about 30, 30 women were involved in this project. And the whole point of it was for that collaboration, you know, the cross promotion between all the artists involved on it and to raise some money for Girls Rock London, who are a charity who do workshops for young women, um, non-binary and transgender people looking to get into the music industry. That's so that cool. Um, what made you want to um, raise money for that charity? And if people want to donate, can they still donate? They can absolutely still donate the charities. You know, they can donate to the charity anytime. Um, and they've also got a uh, I think they've still got it on at the moment where they've got the big give which doubles your donation and um, cool. whatever you donate it gets doubled and you can put the gift aid on it as well we always do that um, and so the all the proceeds from the single are still going to that charity as well so they'll, they'll go to that charity for you know for life basically um, and 20% of the merch as well merch profits go to the charity so if you want to grab yourself some merch um but yeah I wanted to donate to that charity because I think is again it's having those opportunities as younger artists and having a safe space as well because the industry can be really hard on women and non-binary people and transgender they're really really underrepresented yep. um and then you know there are a lot of horror stories about women in the industry were not treated the same as much as everyone would love to say or you know certain people would love to say oh you're all treated the same what you're on about um, I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's not true. You know, I'm, I'm a cis female, cisgender female. Um, I'm gay. 
and we're not treated the same at all. So I think that's that's why that charity was was quite close to my heart to donate these funds to. And they are a smaller charity as well. So, you know, it kind of makes more of an impact. They're doing all these workshops, they're doing, you know, this this social media support as well, like shouting out these these um young artists coming into the industry and just making making that safe space because yeah. you do have a thick skin to be in the industry and that's that's something I will always tell any up and coming artist you need a thick skin and you're not going to do you're not going to thrive if you don't have a thick skin you need to let things go and let them slide off your back but you also need to be able to have that space where you can just go be yourself and not worry that other people are going to be nasty what they're going to say about you what they might comment you know and um and I think that's really important when you're younger as well just to be able to to nurture your talents in a space that's not going to crush you straight away. Um, total change of subject. Um, yeah. We're going to end the interview with a little bit of a fun question. Um, I know that we sometimes ask questions about dream collabs and dream venues that you want to perform in, all that. Um, but if you were doing this dream collab, um, in a dream venue and you could have a dream rider what would be on that rider the dream rider okay right <laughs> um to be, that's that's a really good question mine just gone really blank i think moonshine not moonshine okay. yeah i do love a bit of moonshine um tequila shots for the whole front row if they want yes. it you can have a shot of water if they don't you know but everyone's doing <laughs> shots okay um and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really, as long as there's, there's a green room, I'm pretty happy to be honest. <laughs> do you have anything that like you have to do before a performance, before you go on stage? Any like pre-show rituals? Um, I need five minutes to myself because um, I get really bitchy. <laughs> do you actually? I can't imagine you bitchy. I get, so I get sick really bad and I shake oh. like the teeth and you know it's it's scary once I'm on stage I'm okay I'll, I'll be fine but I get just before going on stage I'm like oh god oh my god I can't do it um <laughs> and I, I get I get a little bit mean so I just it's good to get nervous though it means you still care exactly that's that's why I say that's what I say. good exactly they are I just I just care a lot a lot <laughs> good um if people want to find out more about you where can they go what can they do they can go onto social media. So on Instagram and Facebook, it's merely Quinn Music. On Twitter, it's merely Key Music. My name's too long. Um, <laughs> and they can go to my website as well, which is merelyquinnmusic.com. It's all pretty convenient. It's all merely Quinn Music, to be honest with you. YouTube, Spotify's merely Quinn because you know it's just my name. Um, but yeah, they can add to all of those. All, I always share things from various platforms, so the links will be on there. Um, and yeah, follow me on Spotify as well won't miss any new releases thank you so much for coming on the show and giving up the time it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you thank you so much for having me it's been lovely this song is my next single it was co-written with finola and it comes out on the 23rd of july this is games don't want no drama i can do without ain't no one's mama Packing up my leather heart and skipping this town. This chapter's over. I'm ready to burn a book. Gasoline in my chest, gonna save it from this hood. Back and forth, this tug of war was messing with my head. You thought that you could have your way, but I decided for myself. All you did was waste the time and I thought we had forever. But don't play games with a girl who plays better You're keeping tabs, you hate to see me rise You see the way they look at me with stars in their eyes You see my tight dress, the high boots and I work the smoky eye When you do I'll get a text, say but I just say hi This chapter's over